Doodle bud. So I was sent some inks by a brand I'd never heard of before, neither of you. It's brand new. They go by the name of Inky Ink. They have a store on Etsy by the name of Vintergron. And in the correspondence, their name was Octopus Goodness. So we have four samples here in total. I've opened the box. I just checked them out really quick. I think one of them here has even got uh, some shimmer in it. Which one is it? This one here. There's some shimmering going on. So I haven't even opened them or nothing. So there's only one thing left to do. I think you know what it is. Let's check them out. Well, hello there. I figured I would voice over so I could focus on the pens, focus on the ink. That is a 3D printed pen you just saw, a hex pen. But we're gonna go through, match them up. It, it's, how do you decide what ink goes with which pen? I had to do the shimmer ink with that hex pen so you can see it. I thought I got a nice medium nib in that Esther book. Let's give that a go, that's a nice writer. Um, I tried to get some information to find out. So again, they are a little bit anonymous, which I can totally understand if you've seen my channel I like my privacy as well but they're going to school uh, taking courses and I guess ink was part of the uh, fountain pen rabbit hole they fell down maybe they're studying chemistry I don't know but the uh, basalt ink was the one they thought they would really have that one nailed down but so far I've been using these inks and they're great like I'm thoroughly impressed I didn't really you know, I wasn't going to expect much of it. They just started, to me, it sounded like they just started doing this and they're playing around. Um, but overall, these inks have been fantastic. So whatever you're doing with these inks, keep on doing it. The colors are nice. You're going to see one of them, that shimmering ink is amazing. So first up, this is the snow melt. And how do you name an ink? It's like naming paint colors. We're, we're painting the house and yet the shop for paint and the colors. How do you come up with those names? It's crazy. But the snow melt actually is a very accurate name. It reminds me of like a glacial lake or something like that. So good name there. Juniper teal doesn't look amazing right now, but you'll find out in a moment. This ink is stunning. I had to put it in this hex D uh, DNA pen. Just looks beautiful. It's fun to put any ink in this one, but especially this, it has this blue and green. Look at that. And shimmer. This is an amazing accomplishment for, for just being so early in the ink game. We'll, we'll look at those samples when everything's all dried. So yeah, Juniper Teal is really nice. There's this Emerald as well, Emerald River. Again, you got it could, could be Emerald Lake, could be Emerald River, who knows? <laughs> Emerald Jewel, tough to come up with names, but I think it's, it's, it's a good name. It, it kind of suits it as well. Nice wet ink, I'm happy with the color. This is a architect nib on that pen that is a Marta Modena Delta Dolce Vita kind of ripoff. Well, I shouldn't say ripoff, but it's, uh, you know, an homage to that pen. Quite a nice pen. Uh, followed up here with the Esterbrook, and it's got the basalt in there. It's a nice, rich black. Now, we're going to try different papers because that first sample there was Rody. I'll compare everything at the end, so don't worry. Um, I find other papers just really, they bring out the action in an ink. They really highlight the shading, the sheen, the richness of the color. They make your lines look smoother and fuller as well. Rhodia is fantastic paper. Very consistent, can handle all sorts of stuff. But some other papers do a cool job. I thought, let's just water test this. So a drop of each, that way you can sort of see how they're handling it. Well, here we are. Let's give you a quick close-up of all these inks and that juniper teal. I gotta go to that right away. You get that blue, then you get a green, you get a shadow from my phone, but whatever. You get the picture. This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Very nice and soft colored, like not overly dark or super saturated, but it's quite nice. I typically don't go for inks that are that kind of faint and light, but it's, I don't know, makes me feel calm when I use <laughs> the, uh, the snowmelt ink. And then we got the basalt. You'll see on the other paper, shows up a lot nicer. It's kind of flat here, not really too much super interesting I find on the road. It is quite nice. It's a lighter black, but on the other paper looks way better. And there's the uh, Emerald River there as well. Nice, uh, yeah, not over the top dark. It's fairly well behaved. Uh, nice shading to it as well. Yeah, overall really good on the road. Yeah. Let's get some more interesting paper. So this is the Cosmo Air Light 75 GSM that uh, these are on the Robert Oster signature pads. I got a, a one of these pads when we did a Vancouver Pen Club meeting at the Vancouver Pen Shop. 
that was tons of fun. It was uh, last, I think it was the November of 2022, something like that. But look at that. It looked nice on the road. Yeah, look at it. It's just phenomenal. The snow melt looks so much better, too. It's a really lovely color. And I think the snow melt is a very accurate name, too. So this stuff is really cool. Like, shimmering inks, I mean, they're going to clog up pens. That's just the way it's going to go. But they're a ton of fun when you use it. And you get that color change. I, I, If you can't tell already, I love that ink. Here we are. And you can just see these other papers I find. Look at the letters. They're just so much more fuller and, and smooth. And uh, it just makes your writing look even better as it is already. And here's the basalt. So much nicer color. Let's compare it to the uh, Rhodia there. And so it almost looks like a little bit of an oil stain or something like that. It's got a little more slickness to it. You can see the, the difference there. It looks really, really good. And then here is the Regalia paper. Same type of thing. It's kind of similar to the Cosmo Air Light, but, uh, you know, again, different uh, properties, different behaviors, but I really like writing with it as well. It's one of my kind of new favorite uh, favorite papers, but uh, you just get so much more different action. Did a little more writing there on the Regalia because I just love that stuff. Look at that, the sunset. It's just, how do you not have fun with fountain pens? Sometimes I just come downstairs. I have no agenda of anything to write. And I just get out a pen and some ink and start playing around. And here's how it is on some cheaper Muji paper. So again, I still think the inks look nicer on uh, on the Muji paper. I don't know. Just for whatever reason, I used to be a loved Rhodia. I still like it, but it's definitely not my favorite anymore. Um, oh, one thing. Let me do the surface tension. Let's see how that looks. Let's just take one more look at this uh, DNA hex pen. Look at that. That looks just so nice in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I got the tubes out, but I came up with this idea, if you haven't seen the video, of using capillary tubes to check ink wetness and in particularly uh, surface tension. Now, there is an accurate way to measure the surface tension by how far the ink comes up the capillary tube, but really um, there's a nice visual thing you can get too just by dipping the... Uh, the capillary tube in there and then you get to sort of see how well it wets the surface how quickly it travels down the tube oh my focus is gone there we go so anyways i'm going to get these uh, samples all prepared and then we'll slosh them around give that a look and wrap things up the samples all prepared the order i have on the bottom we have the emerald lake above that basalt above that is the snow melt and the very top is the juniper teal and so you can start to observe what happens to the inks you can see how well they coat the tube that's going to let us know sort of its wettability and some of the surface tension properties of the ink and another thing too if it really wets nicely as the ink travels through the pen it's got other ink molecules to pull it along so those are the uh, cohesive forces within the ink to pull it along and then there's adhesive forces of it adhering to other surfaces so those are some things we've got to think about on an ink's uh, property its ability to flow through a pen sometimes you want a drier ink sometimes you want one more wet but this is a nice way uh, to just get you know you could come up with a standard maybe tilt angle stuff like that i'm still debating that but at the end of the day you can see what happens to these inks and sort of make that decision up for yourself how well they behave big thank you goes out to inky ink for sending me your lovely inks to review awesome work i've been enjoying these the uh description down below will have a link to the etsy store i thought let's finish off on this too something else for some of you folks out there you like to sniff inks so these have uh, a unique smell i i'm not the best guy when it comes to sense of smell mine's not too great but when i give them a sniff i know i sniffed it with the camera but i've actually sniffed them I, I detect notes of like uh, wintergreen or something. So it's actually quite pleasant. It's not stinky or any weird smell. It's it's like a familiar smell I've smelt before, but I can't quite say where, but it's it's all right. I like how they smell. Whoa, almost dumped it. Did you see that finger up? And I whacked. Man, that my wife would have killed me. This is her desk. This has to be clean for tomorrow mornings, which, by the way, is not, yep, not too far away late again. So let me clean this up. Thanks for watching the video. Hit subscribe. I got a ton of stuff coming down the pipe here. So stay tuned. Catch you next time.